Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to say I have been live pretty regularly on Twitch, doing some shiny hunting, raids and sword and shield, and is overall playing the games a lot. So if you guys want to interact with me live, go follow me on there and have notifications on when I'm live, that way you don't miss me. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. Pokemon Sword and Shield are super fun, and what do you know? After I beat Pokemon Shield, you know darn well I had to play Pokemon Sword. Last week I did my Pokemon Shield team, and you guys seemed to really like it due to the support I got. Also you guys have some awesome teams in the comment section. Some of them were actually very creative, and mons I wouldn't expect. But due to how well last week's video was received, I decided that since you guys loved it so much, I wanted to show you guys the team I used when I played Sword, which I actually beat a couple days ago. There were a lot of Pokemon I saw in Shield that I wanted to use on a Pokemon team in the future. I figured I had my sword copy just sitting around, so I decided, why not? I'll play through Galar again and show the audience the team I use for this game. I will say this team was a little more planned, because I already had a pretty big list of Pokemon I wanted to use. Regardless, it was still tough to pick between just six mons, because the list is absolutely huge. These six Pokemon are the six most I wanted to use, and I think you guys will love a lot of the Pokemon on this team. Also, one more side note I should mention, these will not be in any particular order, so keep that in mind. I literally can't wait to talk about my Pokemon Sword experience, so I'll just be skipping being the more babbling part and just hop into the team I used on my second adventure through Galar. Coming up first is of course my starter Pokemon. If you guys have been keeping up with my regular Sword and Shield content, you will know that I couldn't decide on what starter Pokemon I wanted to use initially because quite frankly they are all great in their own right, especially Scorbunny. Scorbunny is incredible, strong, and to me it has the best design of all the starters. This time around however, I did not use Scorbunny. Instead I used Grookey, which I can say is my second favorite starter in Galar. Don't get me wrong, I love Sobble, but its evolutions are just a no for me and I think a lot of people can agree. Grookey being my second favorite starter, I had to use it. I saw all of my other friends using it and they seemed to really enjoy it. Rillaboom just reminds me of a green skinned Donkey Kong with a drum, and to me I find that to be a funny concept, but a great one. We don't talk about Grookey's middle evolution though. That Pokemon is a yikes. Rillaboom is pretty awesome. I love the green vinery around its design and the fact that it's essentially based on a drummer monkey. Plus my inner Dragon Ball fanboy kind of wanted to use it because it was an ape-like Pokemon. The Saiyans are apes, yeah you get it. I was also pretty satisfied with a grass type performance in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Surprisingly, my Grookey line actually did very well in comparison to other times I chose grass starters. Galar, from what I have seen, is just more welcome to grass types, unlike other regions like Johto. I'm sorry, Meganium, you know you're still my favorite, but Rillaboom is just better in that sense. So props to Rillaboom for being a beast. Coming up next to my sword team is none other than Yamper. I know this Pokemon has been a fan favorite from the beginning, being based on a cute Corgi Pupper. I wanted to use Yamper in my shield team, but that didn't work, so I thought now would be the perfect time to do it. Yamper just came off so adorable in the original trailer it debuted in, so I needed to use it this time around. At first, I really wasn't a huge fan of Bolton, but it grew on me the more I saw people using it in max raids. Its design is actually pretty sleek, plus it's a hard hitting electric mon, something that I wanted back in Pokemon Sword. I had Toxtricity and Shield, and I wanted another electric mon to have a great performance. Bolton didn't perform as great as Toxtricity, but hey, it did well. So design and stats aside, the main reason I wanted to have Yamper and Bolton on my team is because I actually have a Corgi IRL named Toby. He is the cutest dog I know and is just the goofiest little guy. We found him at the park back in March abandoned and we took him in. He's now one of my best friends and I love this little guy. So I named my Bolton Toby be because of my buddy. The next Pokemon I decided on was a water Pokemon I've actually used before being Gastrodon. The water Pokemon selection in Pokemon Sword and Shield is pretty lackluster, I'm sorry to say. The fossils, yikes. Barrascuta is alright, Gyarados is nice, but I've used it before a lot, and of course I love Lapras, but again I've used it too many times. Gigantamax Lapras I will say is pretty majestic though. Gastrodon was a mon I haven't used since Generation 4. I've used a few in randomizers, but I don't count those. Gastrodon is just so great on paper versus Galar. I know this isn't a best team or anything, but looking at the layout and such, Gastrodon actually looked like it would do really well. In fact, it didn't do well, it did fantastic. Whether or not it will be on the best team, maybe, maybe not. Because of its speed, I will just see how it pans out. Don't get me wrong, I may have used Gastrodon as more of a strategic choice this time than favoritism, but I still love Gastrodon's design a lot. More so the pink western one though. I can't find a western one, so I was stuck using the green one, which isn't bad. I just wanted to use the western because that's my preference. Pink to me just matches Gastrodon more than green. Sea slugs are still adorable though, and I love Gastrodon a lot.
Scorch has to be another one of my favorite design Pokemon in Sword and Shield by far. The Fire and Bug type once again is given a god amongst Pokemon. Volcarona kicks off this typing great, and Scorch just added to the dopeness. A Fire Centipede is such a cool concept, and with Scorch's design, it was done perfectly. Some Pokemon's designs aren't done right with the concept they were given, but Scorch is. Sizzlepeed is also a great first evolution Pokemon that evolves into this beast. I will not lie though, finding Sizzlepeed took me a little while to find but I found it eventually and I don't regret it. What made me really compelled to using it was seeing Kabu use his. Kabu is one of my favorite gym leaders in Sword and Shield, being from the Hoenn region originally and having quite the awesome backstory. I think he's Flannery's grandpa or dad to be honest, but then again, that's just a yes. Back to his Scorch though. When he brought it out the first time when I was playing Shield, I was in shock because of how cool it looked. I immediately made a side note and told myself, yeah, I'm using it in the future. The Gigantamax form for Scorch also looks incredibly cool, and that also filled my excitement to use it in the future. In general, I just love Firebugs, and Scorch is definitely one of the coolest ones I know. The pseudo-legendary Pokemon in this game, Dragapult, has to be one of the best designed and one of the strongest pseudo-legendary Pokemon I have ever seen. The first time I saw Dragapult was against Leon's when facing against him in the Champions League. I asked, what the heck is that? Everyone in my Twitch chat told me it was the pseudo-legendary of this game. I thought to myself, yeah, the next time I play this game, I'm going to be using it and I want to breed a competitive one, which I already have. The dragon is a monster in-game and competitively. So obviously, I have the want aspect of Dragapult, meaning I wanted it really bad. I wanted to use it in my sword playthrough, but because I was lazy, I decided to take a bit of a shortcut. I knew how difficult it was to find, and I wanted it earlier in the game, so I kind of bred one for myself in Pokemon Shield and traded it over to Pokemon Sword. I don't know, does that make me a cheater? Technically, this was my second playthrough through Galar, so I don't feel as bad. My first time, however, I probably would have felt a little bit more guilty. Going into Dreepy and Dracloak, these two Pokemon are just as well designed as Dragapult is. Dreepy kind of reminds me of a derpier Dratini in a sense. I love the little googly eyes it has. Dracloak to me is my favorite of the three because it has Dreepy on top of its head, and in a sense, it's kind of like Slowbro's evolution where the shoulder stays attached to Slowbro. Dreepy does the same thing with Dracloak, and it was another one of those concepts done right as well. Also, the typing of Dragon and Ghost is incredibly awesome. We haven't had one since Giratina, and it was nice to see it get thrown on another Pokemon other than a Legendary. I'm glad this dope dual typing combo was given to such a great Pokemon being Dragapult. The moment I set eyes on Hatena, I wanted to use it on my team. It was a choice of using Hatterene or Galarian Rapidash, and I chose Galarian Rapidash because I was so set in stone on what Pokemon I wanted to use. Galarian Rapidash is also my favorite Pokemon in Sword and Shield, so that's also another reason why. I wanted to give Hatterene a chance though, and I gotta say, regardless of its slowness, it was actually a really fun Pokemon to use on my sword team. Design-wise, I have to say once again, one of my favorite Pokemon in the Galar decks. If you guys are Kirby fans out there, then Little Hatena should also remind you of something very similar. The Sleeping Monsters. I forget what they are called, but they look extremely similar. Going into the further evolutions with Hatram and Hatterene, I start to see this majestic looking habit swearing. I get a really big Miss Magius vibe, and that's what compelled me to want to use it. Also, Maple from The Legend of Zelda, the Oracle games, also helps out with this. The Hatterene line is just a cute sleeping witch, and that's what made me want to use it truly. There's also another funny story about Hatrem that I want to talk about. I tried finding Hatena in the beginning of the game in the wild area because I thought it was there and I was looking in the wrong places the entire time. Turns out you can get it in places like Hammerlock Kills, Modest Oak Outskirts, and the Stony Wilderness. I was looking in the wrong place the entire time, and I gave up on trying to find Hatena. Then I remembered when I was playing through Pokemon Shield, when I was looking for Glorian Ponyta, that I ran into a Hatram in Glimwood Tangle. I was super relieved I was able to find it because of the hat. Hatram, I have to say, is my favorite of the three for sure. The hat is just so big for its little body, and it looks precious. But yeah, that's my adventure with Hatram, and the reason why I wanted to have Hatterin on my team. Well, that pretty much wraps up my Pokemon Sword team. As I said, these Pokemon were already planned prior, but I already played through Shield already, so it makes sense as to why they would be. I have already seen all the Pokemon in Sword and Shield, and I have to say the majority of them look great. The Pokemon I had in my Shield team and this team have to be my absolute favorites 100% for sure. I really enjoyed Pokemon Sword and Shield so much, and I can't wait to do more videos about these games in the future. Let me know what other kinds of videos you guys would like to see about Pokemon Sword and Shield 2, as well as let me know your teams you use in the comment section below. 
If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Also, I've been reviewing every episode of My Hero Academia Season 4 over on Mystic Sage, so head over there if you're into that too. I would love that a lot. Want to support me further further in game called Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leone, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Austin Lego, Jarrett Wiz Austin, Sodden Grider, and Enigma97 did. And I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.